Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us discuss about prerequisites required for learning React before we set up our code editor and React onto our system. In the previous video, I touched briefly about what is React and why one should learn React. Let us talk about necessary prerequisites that you must have a knowledge of before learning React. You should have a basic knowledge of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. HTML and CSS are something that you can easily learn from free resources available on the internet. I may do a series or a video on it in the future. For JavaScript, I do have a complete series where you can learn JavaScript from absolute scratch from the very basics along with exercises and cool projects. Some of the exercises that we covered in that playlist were practicing DOM query methods and DOM traversal. It's a very important concept even for React. Then DOM traversal exercise along various levels. Then we also had an exercise on infinite scrolling with JavaScript and then this one creating your own async await using generators. And we have also covered some projects in this playlist. So let me show you these. First one was making a COVID-19 tracker and visualization application. And then we have one more project which is a to-do list using JavaScript and Tailwind CSS. I will add more projects to this series so don't forget to bookmark the playlist so that you can easily reference it when required. Also, I will provide the link for the series both in the description and in the comment section of this video. Now coming to React, for this series you will need a text editor and I will be using Visual Studio Code as my preferred editor of choice. I recommend Visual Studio Code for beginners because it serves as an all-in-one solution that comes with amazing built-in features, extensions that we can leverage for an efficient workflow. Also, it is open source and is cross-platform. Next, we need Node.js so that we can manage all the dependencies that we would require while working with React. So head over to Node.js.org and install Node.js onto your system. Once you are done with the installation, to verify whether the installation did succeed it or not, open up the integrated terminal of your Visual Studio Code and type Node-Version. If the version of Node gets logged in the terminal, then you are good to go. Lastly, let us set up a React project so that we can start to learn about React in the next videos. Though we do have a CDN as well, using which we can include it directly into the HTML file in which we want to use React. But for big projects, we need a more complex build workflow. But before setting up, we need to know why do we need such a complex build workflow and how to get one. Now the reason for requiring a complex build workflow is that we need to optimize our code for bigger applications. For large scale applications, we want to ship code that is as optimized and lean as possible because that increases the performance of the application due to a leaner bundle size of the application. Next we also want to use the latest ES6 plus JavaScript features because it makes our lives as a React developer much more easier and the code that we write using these features is leaner, faster, less error prone and includes best practices as well. We want the ability to write modern ES6 plus code and then still be able to ship the code that runs on as many browsers as possible which means that it should also support legacy browsers like Internet Explorer and more. Now one downside is that not all the browsers support these modern ES6 plus features and that is why we need such a complex build workflow that compiles these features into the code that even the legacy browsers can understand. And for this, transpilers like Babel comes into picture. Now having a complex build workflow makes us more productive. Then we can also add things like linting and more as a part of the build workflow. So in essence, our main goal is to cover as many browsers as possible. And that is the reason why we need a complex development workflow for our projects. Then we also need a user dependency management tool like npm or yarn. So all the build tools that we require are dependencies. So they need to get installed before we can make use of them. Then next we need a bundler for example webpack to make sure that our code gets bundled in the end into a couple of files before we ship the code into production. Next we also need a transpiler namely babel plus some presets which translates the code that uses modern ES6 plus features into its ES5 equivalent that can also work on legacy browsers like Internet Explorer. Lastly, we also need a local development server to test our application when it is running on our machine while we are developing features of our application. 
But setting up this entire configuration is really a pain in the neck. So we will use an amazing tool with zero configuration required to be done from our site and that is create react app for developing our applications. So now we already have node.js installed onto our system. Let us search for create react app. So create react app. Click on this github link. And right here you can see the command for setting up a new react project. So we can make use of npx create react app, the name of your app. Then you can cd into that and you can start the app. So you can see it says if you have previously installed create react app globally via npm install hyphen g create react app. They recommend you to uninstall the package using this to ensure that npx always uses the latest version. Okay. So we will be making use of npx and I won't be installing create react app globally. So let us head over to our main folder and create a new react app. So right inside our main folder, let us run this command npx create react app. And for the name of the app, let us say intro to react. So now we are successfully done with the setup. Let's see how our bootstrapped application that the create react app provides us actually looks like. For this create react app provides us with a local development server which we can use to run our application locally on our machine. So right inside the terminal let us run the command. So let us first change our directory to the project directory so intro to react and npm run start to run the server. So you can see that we have successfully set up a react project. So this was all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video we'll go over the project structure that create react app gave us and we'll start to create our very first react component. So if you like the video do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get the notification for all the upcoming uploads and I will see you guys in the very next one.